everybody here? Let's hear it. Woo Thanks for coming out. We're going to do this before it rains, and it's not going to rain. All right. One of the things that most, that's most special to me about living here in one of the world capitals of culture is the artistic lineage that continues. Graham lives on in many of you standing here today. For that reason, I want you to think about what brought you here, right here, right now. What's your connection to Martha Graham? Maybe you saw a Graham performance, or maybe you've been influenced by her aesthetic. So, would anyone like to share? If you want to raise your hand, I'll, I'll call on you. Come on, some of you have known Martha, seen the company perform. Hi, I'm Lee Trapp. Uh, I was chairman of the Martha Graham Company for 10 years, some time ago. But what I wanted to say is that Martha Graham is considered to be one of the few and maybe the only woman genius of the 20th century in America. And what she did, besides all the things that this lady has said, is she invented a whole language as though you invented Italian or French or whatever. And that really is part of her greatness. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to turn this over to Phil Hartman of Two Boots Pizza. Um, did I have something else to say? Calling on my friend and partner in Plax, Phil Hartman. Thanks, Karen, and thanks, uh, New School and GVSHP. So we've been doing this since 2012. This is the sixth plaque we've put up around uh, the East and West Village. Uh, we've done plaques that honored people. We've done plaques that honored places, like the Fillmore East. And one point that we always try to make is how important it is to keep the cultural legacy alive, that we're not just looking back, they're always trying to uh, generate interest and support and enthusiasm for the arts and the culture of the East and West Village. So it's not just about looking backward, it's about looking forward. And this is the first occasion we've had where the organization that we're honoring actually is still thriving and is still going strong. So it's really wonderful to be here with the Martha Graham community today. Um, two Boots started in the East Village, we're in the West Village, and uh, we're born and bred down here. My kids were raised down here. People ask me today, why are you doing this? Um, Two Boots' success is inextricably intertwined with the life of this community. And we're nourished every day by the arts community here. So this is a chance for us to give back, and we can't really give back enough because we get so much from the community. So please stick around. There's going to be pizza on this table in about 20 minutes, I think. Um, and there's going to be more speakers and a video between now and then. So thanks. Thank you, Phil. And I would like to now introduce the president of the New School, David Van Zandt. Thank you very much, uh, Karen, and thank you, Phil. Uh, also, you'll hear in a moment from uh, Janet Ilbo from Martha Graham Company. Thank you to all three of you for making this possible to, to uh, uh, put this plaque up on one of our buildings here at the New School. It means a lot. You know, Martha Graham uh, taught here uh, in the 1930s, uh, into the uh, 40s, and even into the 50s. Um, she was an innovator, uh, and she really reflects the New School values today that have always been with us, which is about creativity and innovation, and also about, though, being socially engaged with the community around. You know, Martha Graham was here for a very long period of time, uh, and she was here with many other visionaries and innovators in different fields. Uh, just for a few examples, I mean, she interacted with, with John Cage, Frank Lloyd Wright in architecture was here, Erwin um, Piscotter in the drama, in drama area was here. We've also had great students who've been innovators in, in different in different ways, including more recently Donna Karen and, and Mark Jacobs in design, 
um, the Oscar-winning uh, uh, documentary film uh, winner, uh, uh, filmmaker Laura Poitras, just won the Oscar this year, I think reflects that tradition that Martha Graham, Martha Graham was part of. Um, I think that Martha Graham would be pleased to know uh, that the New School remains a place of innovation and creativity. She was a leading edge, an innovator in dance, uh, and we still have innovators today that we teach, we graduate, we teach here, uh, and so I think it's with a great deal of pride that we can count Martha Graham as part of our, as part of our legacy and part of our history. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Hear from Janet Elber, the artistic director of the Martha Graham Dance Company, and a dancer herself. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, President Vincent, and thank you, Phil Hartman, and thank you, Karen Lowe, and everyone who has uh, made this possible. I am sure that Martha Graham would have been delighted to have this venue, this space where she worked, memorialized because there's nothing more essential to a dancer than space, both psychic and spiritual space, but also simply the room to move. Uh, as Martha famously said, wherever a dancer stands is holy ground. And for what we know about her creative output here, the, the classic works that were birthed, that this must indeed be particularly holy ground here at 66 Fifth Avenue. Uh, we're showing you a film we thought it'd be appropriate to have Martha Graham here. Well, she's here in spirit, but also on celluloid. Uh, this is a film of her solo from 1935 titled Frontier. And it's appropriate to the idea of space. It's also so appropriate uh, to Martha herself. She was all about the future. She had what she called an appetite for the new. Uh, she was always moving forward. In the course of her career, she broke ground in every aspect of dance and theater. She not only created her radical new style of movement, the contraction and the release, but she changed uh, costuming, she changed lighting design, she changed the use of music for dance and the space on stage. Uh, the Frontier shows her first collaboration with the sculptor Isama Noguchi, for example. In her work at the Neighborhood Playhouse, she changed the course of American acting with students such as Betty Davis, um, Gregory Peck, Orson Welles, and of course in the dance world it's impossible to measure her influence. Just a small example, the choreographers Merce Cunningham and Paul Taylor both began their careers in the company of Martha Graham. Uh, she choreographed for seven decades, working well into her 90s. Uh, and the, the core work that she did here at 66th Fifth is a foundation that we still are uh, springing forward from because her legacy is one of forward movement. Today's company not only performs the Graham Classics, uh, but we're also experimenting and trying to uh, honor Martha's appetite for the new, uh, finding new ways to present her classics through contextual programming or media, diverse cultural partners, and of course the commissioning of new work. Uh, we are about to launch into our 90th season. Uh, we'll be performing at City Center in April, Classic Graham Works alongside several world premieres. We hope you'll be there. So it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, and I can't in a few sentences uh, encapsulate his remarkable career or how much he means to the Graham legacy and the world of dance in general. Uh, he is one of Graham's greatest artists and worked with Martha Graham here at 66 Fifth Avenue. And of course his career has many other highlights as a great educator, choreographer, author, father, grandfather, great friend. It's my pleasure to introduce one of my favorite people, Stuart Holtz. Uh, Janet used to take my classes, and her presence practically made me forget everything I was going to teach. She was 19 years old. Uh, I walked into these, I bet they're the same steps, nothing else is the same, but it was September 16, 1946. I walked in and took my first lesson. I never heard of Martha Graham 
but an actor friend had told me she was wonderful. So I found myself downtown, walked in, that was about a week before September 16th, and the studio was dark, there were three people there. I asked one of them, his name was Tony Charmley, he became a very big television choreographer, I said, what's the difference between modern dance and ballet? And his answer was, well, in ballet you do two and three turns, in modern dance you only do one. <laughs> there was a second guy there, and he took me into the studio, which was dark, and he grabbed the bar and he did a split. And he said, when I started, which was six months before that, I couldn't even touch my toes. So then I asked the third person, whose name was Donald Duncan, he was the manager of the company. I said, is it too late for me to start? He said, how old are you? I said, well, I'm 20, I'll soon be 21. He says, well, there'll be people in your class older than you. And I said, well, are they all beginners? Yes. And I said, well, I'll take a month of classes, and if at the end of the month I'm the best one in the class, I'll take another month. I was all ready, for no reason at all, thinking of becoming a dancer. Most irrational, ridiculous thing. It has to be the studio. I hadn't met Martha yet. But anyway, I started taking classes, started with three a week, which was a minimum, then upped it to five. And then Martha said I should take ballet. Good, I go uptown taking ballet. About a month, maybe two months later, she said, how are your ballet classes going? I said, oh, fine. I said, she says, how many classes do you take there? I said, I take eight. She says, you don't take that many classes in this school, with which she blew up at me. I'd never known about her temper, but that's the only way I equal Martha Graham. I have as big a temper, and she said, you don't have to take any classes here. And I said, all right, I won't. And I went out and got my bag and very loudly packed it and ran for the elevator, which was an old-fashioned, hand-operated, slow elevator, and pushed the button. Now, I could have run down the stairs. I don't know why I pushed the button, but I'm waiting there, and out comes Martha, and she sweet-talks me back. And she lost her temper a lot, and so did I. <laughs> But that's a love affair that will never end. I love her. And I watched, at first I watched great dances like Night Journey and Letter to the World and Errand into the Maze. And then she started a brand new dance, Diversion of Angels, right here. And I was in that. It's hard to describe it. When I just came here tonight, I saw all these members of my family. That's how it was to be in the Graham Company. Of course, I didn't earn a dime. I had to do Broadway. But it seemed like a small <laughs> it seemed like a small price to pay, and the truth is I loved it. I loved all dancing and Martha Graham taught it to me. And I think I've run over, off my five minutes now. Oh yes I have. Uh, thank you very much for that. Oh I'm very thank you to the people who got this clap going, because now when I pass, not only I will remember the wonderful things, but other people will kind of get a hint of it. Thank you. going to stick around so we might hear more from him because yes 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 if you danced in the Martha Graham company please raise your hand please raise it high raise it high look at this all right and if you dance elsewhere if you're a dancer raise your hand everybody there was a theater here called the Fifth Avenue Cinema and they gave professional courtesy to all of Martha's dancers and there was one film that was shown here called Farabique. Have anybody ever heard of that film? Farabique, F-A-R-A-B-I-Q-U-E. And it was the first motion picture that had stop motion uh, uh, photographs of flowers growing. And it knocked Martha out because in those days she had discovered the spiral. Now all the Graham dancers here know about the spiral. Right, 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 right. And she wanted us to see this because it just, she showed that it was not just people, it was nature itself, or plants that would grow. She said, life, this is a quote, life follows a spiral path. Well, I've tried to apply that, and I'm not too good at that, but it sounded marvelous. And, and uh, I think it did help us in learning to dance, especially where Martha did falls. One of the falls was, well, maybe they all were, but I don't know preceded by a spiral. The body kind of did this and then dropped to the floor and if I tried it, I have to be hauled away. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, this neighborhood. Yeah. 
traffic? I can't describe it. What? Did you say Schrafts? Was it as much traffic? No, Schrafts. There was a Schrafts across the street. No, the Schrafts was on the corner, and it was too expensive. It cost a dime for a cup of coffee, where Harlow's Drugstore across the street was five cents. <laughs> but uh, that building, which I've kind of grown to like in the last 15 minutes, I really have. Um, we couldn't have imagined it. There was a place on the corner that rented tuxedos. I don't think, do they rent tuxedos these days? Yeah. I still do. But uh, you could walk up the street, and there Eric Hawkins, who was uh, Martha's husband for a while, had his own studio. And um, I spent many hours there, and it was a much more modest studio, but it was incredibly clean. I mean, Eric was a nut for cleanliness. No, everybody was, Martha's studio was clean, but Eric was fanatic, and then one day, there was this terrible war. I was in the studio, and so was Eric. We were rehearsing. And it was like the World Trade Center. This terrible fog of dust came out. And he had a cot in a little room. And the ceiling had collapsed, but he wasn't there. But he turned as pale as the dust, because he could have been there. So, not interesting. There's thousands of, as I say to several people here, there was a lot of serious work, but my God, there were wonderful laughs as well. Martha had a great sense of humor besides her terrible temper. She boasted about it, how she once tore a telephone off the wall because somebody had told her, I think it was Ted Sean, and uh, she just threw it in the middle of the stage. Um, she didn't try that on me too often. Well, she never tried that on me. but. Uh, the first, I, I always lost my temper back, but I never, I never stay mad, and I'd always be happy to see her the next day. The first time I did not lose my temper was the last time I ever had a fight with her because I left the company. So, uh, well, not mad, I didn't go away mad. Uh, I don't think you could stay mad at Martha. Although some people did, Bob Cohan, but eventually they came back together again. I don't know, I, it would take somebody with more, in, maybe Ellen Graff, PhD. She could describe it, she's got a PhD, but I can't describe it, I can't analyze it, because it's too mysterious. <laughs> Please, I've talked too much. What's an example of more than sense of humor? What, what? Her sense of humor. What's Her sense of humor. What's an example? All right, I'll give you an example, and it's sort of a mean one, too. Okay. There was a guy <laughs> taking class with us. Should I say his name? Yes. yes. No? Yes. Chuck Zarney. Remember? And he Chuck's was a good dancer. He was everything Martha wanted. A tall, strong, technically fine. And we'd say, you should take Chuck, and she would just hesitate. So we went to see the Lamont Company at the 97th Street Y in a wonderful dance called Ritmo Hondo, Deep Rhythm. And Chuck was in it. And we all liked it. We loved the music. She commissioned the composer to make one for her score. But then we said, what did you think of Chuck? And we had noticed something, that he danced with his eyes popped open and his mouth. And she said, he looked like a baby that had just had the nipple pulled out. That's pretty mean. But we laughed, and thank God we weren't Chuck. <laughs> that was one example of her humor. When we were in the Philippines, we were served roast suckling pig. Well, Martha was like 90% vegetarian, and this thing was placed in front of her little legs, apple, little legs, just looking, and his eyes were partly open. <laughs> and she said, he hasn't lived very long. But that's sort of sad. But then because I was known as the company garbage pail, I was given a huge portion, and I ate it, and Martha kept saying, oh, look how Stuart loves it. So I did it, I could eat anything. And the next day, after the show, they delivered me one, just for myself. 
Well, we had a lot of laughs. It was a lot of fun. Not really much crying, I don't think. Well, I don't know. Janet would know more about that. Where's Janet? Yep, I mean, there were, there were tears, you know. Did you cry? Never? No, nah, I wouldn't have thought so. But there were people like, uh, there was a wonderful girl, she was Dutch. She married Richard Davalos, an actor. Helen, Helen Vanderhoven. Helen, Ellen, no, no. Yes, Ellen Vanderhoven, who would always break down in tears. But Martha loved her. She, she was so close to her emotions, Ellen was. And one day, Ellen had a big fit backstage. And then when Martha went to see her, Martha told people, Martha was moved, by the way. She said, well, we finally worked things out. And before I left, she said, kiss me goodnight. Not sweet. And Martha said, but oh, she also used to say she never would have made a good mother. She's right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Phil Hartman, where are you? Yes. Let's unveil the plaque. And uh, President Van Zandt, yep. Janet, anyone who wants to come pull at our beautiful cloth here? Martha Graham, 1894 to 1991, the renowned pioneer of modern dance created radical new dances and rehearsed her company in this building during the 1930s and 40s. Graham also taught in a studio later named in her honor at the New School at 66 West 12th Street. Her dramatic style revolutionized the art form, influencing dance and theater worldwide. Placed by the Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation with the generous support of the Two Foods Foundation. So hopefully this plaque will be here forever. And uh, the legacy of Martha Graham obviously continues. Enjoy, we're gonna have pizza soon. And uh, please meet each other and talk about our shared love. Thank you for being here.